Hey, everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. So three years ago, I was discussing a right to repair bill that was being proposed in the state of Massachusetts for the automotive industry so that you could continue to go to the mechanic of your choice to have your vehicle fixed. This was in spite of a lot of ridiculous commercials implying that if this passed, that you would be sexually assaulted in a parking lot, as you can see from this ridiculous commercial, they still wound up losing. The repair side won. I believe it was 74 to 26. Shame on the 26% that thought this was actually true, and they won. And it seems like there's another initiative similar to this that is going forward in the state of Maine, and I thought we could talk about this today. It says, right to repair question qualifies for Maine's ballot. This means that they got the requisite number of signatures to actually show up on the ballot so that normal, everyday people could vote yes or no on whether or not they want this passed into law, which is really cool. So here are certain pieces from the article, and I want to really focus on one primary question that I think every single consumer should be asking at this point in time in 2023. So it says, unfortunately, many of these newest vehicles, that wireless data is fed automatically back to car manufacturers and is not available to independent shops like yourselves, Winkler said. So that's all we're asking for is a level playing field so that independent repair shops can have access to the same data as car manufacturers and their networks of dealerships has. The Citizens Initiative now goes to the legislature, which can either approve it as written or allow it to go to voters this fall, which is what typically happens. So the idea here is that a lot of what's necessary to do a lot of the diagnostics and repair and everything. Now, there is a right to repair bill in Massachusetts that passed in 2012 that says the mechanics have to get access to this, but that's only for the wired stuff. Apparently, this stuff that's being done wirelessly, and that is exactly exempt, there's a loophole around that particular bill. So the issue is, if you are dealing with a car where any of this stuff is transmitted wirelessly, you as an independent mechanic can be shit out of luck. So what they're asking for here is to have the access to those systems so that they can continue to work on your car. Now, here is what the opposition lobbyists against right to repair are saying. The Alliance for Automotive Innovation, a trade group representing car manufacturers and industry suppliers, argued in an October 2022 memo that independent shops already have access to diagnostic information and repair tools. Instead, the Alliance portrayed the ballot initiative and similar efforts nationwide as a monetizable data grab from national aftermarket part manufacturers and retailers masquerading as consumer protection. The Alliance for Automotive Innovation said the ballot initiative could pose a cybersecurity risk by giving those manufacturers and retailers access to car owners' private data and that is potentially valuable for marketing but is unrelated to repairs. Now, two things. A, do you think that your independent mechanic is actually going to the legislature to try to get access to monetizable data from your car or do you think that he just wants the ability to fix your car? Like in your heart of hearts, if you think about Joe's mechanic shop down the street, what do you think he is more interested in? Monetizing your personal data or being able to fix your car, take a few hundred bucks from you, and get you the F out of there. Secondly, the question that every single consumer should be asking, why the fuck is my car collecting monetizable data on me? Why is my car collecting data on me that can be used to track me or identify me or any shit like that? Again, I understand you have computers in modern cars, you have the lane assist stuff, you have anti-lock braking, you have music streaming and all. Why is my car collecting monetizable data about me to begin with? The fact that you can even make the argument that an independent mechanic is requesting access to this so that he can breach my privacy or advertise to me means that my car is collecting data that I can't opt out of about me to begin with, which is a very serious issue that should be asked by every single fucking consumer that reads this. Why? Why? Why do you need that information? Again, it's one thing if you buy a Tesla and you opt into the full self-driving shit and you're constantly sending data back to the manufacturer because you're literally training the system on how to drive, which again, it's very, very far from being actually usable. It needs a, probably another 80 years of training before it gets anywhere. But at least then you could kind of make the argument. But if you have a normal, average, everyday, not self-driving car, what the hell is being collected on you? Why is it storing that information? Why don't I have the option to delete it or opt out of it so that even if my mechanic had full 100% access to all the stuff that my car is leaking wirelessly, he could not advertise to me, profile me, or identify me in any sort of weird way? I think it's a question that needs to be asked, and I think that we should stop accepting the premise of assholes and saying, no, it's not that we want to, we're not going to steal your data, we promise, we're really good independent repair shops, we're not going to do it alliance, no, we have to stop doing that shit, we have to stop accepting the premise 
of assholes. Because when you go on the defensive on this type of thing, it makes you seem suspicious. We need to go on the offensive. If my car is collecting monetizable, personally identifiable data about me that can be used to advertise me or profile me to advertisers, why is this information not behind lock and key? If a customer brings me an M1 MacBook to do a motherboard repair on, I can't get access to their data because it is encrypted. I need their password to get access to the data. Even if I remove the NANs and I desolder everything or I have full access to their hardware, I can't get access to their data because in spite of all the crap that I give Apple, they actually put a little bit of effort in to ensure that consumers can actually protect their data. So here's the question. Why is it that myself as a mechanic, if I have access to this individual's car and had access to a system that allows me to connect to it, would be able to get access to the consumer's data if they wanted to protect that data? But above all, why the fuck is the consumer's car collecting data on them to begin with? Can you answer that question, Alliance for Automotive Innovation? Can you answer that? Probably not. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video.